considered by some to be one of the last frontiers in the world of vehicle electrification, at least if you're talking about vehicles that everyday people might end up owning and driving, electric pickups are finally taking off. Of course, you've got Tesla's Cybertruck, the soon-to-be-unveiled Hummer pickup, the Rivian R1T and Ford's promised all-electric F-150, not to mention the Atlas pickup and its claimed super-fast recharge times. But you've also got Bollinger, a company that was born when its founder, Robert Bollinger, grew tired of the lack of choices for electric vehicles powerful enough and rugged enough to endure daily duties on a farm, and decided to do something about it, making his own. The result, as I'm sure you're aware, is a Bollinger B1 and Bollinger B2 electric pickup and electric SUV. Built in a very functional way, these go-anywhere off-roaders have the power and battery pack, not to mention interior simplicity, to be true workhorses. And for those who are fond of the original Land Rover design, I'm talking the one that was in production for, what, 70 plus years, not the fancy schmancy ones that you see driving around busy cities. There's a familiarity and an honesty that the B1 and B2 have that are shared with that iconic off-roader. Yet with six-figure purchase prices, neither the B1 nor the B2 are particularly affordable. In fact, unless you need a full Class 3 pickup or an SUV, the chances are that you're going to be better off with one of the alternatives out there. Think Tesla or maybe Rivian. It also goes without saying that at that price, and to be fair, Rivian has admitted as much, the majority of customers for the B1 and B2 will be commercial customers, fleet operators, military, and perhaps the odd off-road enthusiast with a bit too much money to spare. Yet last week, Bollinger unveiled a surprise, the Bollinger E chassis, a Class 3 skateboard chassis complete with the same battery pack and drivetrain that's found underneath the B1 and B2, just without anything on top. There's no details on prices for this yet, and I'm going to be honest, it's not likely to be all that affordable for regular private customers. So why is Bollinger doing this? And who is the chassis actually aimed at? I'm about to tell you, and why I think this is a very smart move indeed by Bollinger. According to the company's press release, the idea behind the e-chassis is pretty simple. It wants to give commercial vehicle companies the chance to build their own all-electric models without needing to spend a lot of money developing their own drivetrain and battery pack. The package it's offering includes the ability to carry up to £5,000, go off-road and have a choice of front wheel, rear wheel or all-wheel drive capabilities. And because it's based on the B1 and B2, the option to have portal gear hubs and hydropneumatic suspension is also there into the bargain. For commercial applications, that's a pretty heavy list. And along with a choice of 120 kilowatt hour or 180 kilowatt hour battery packs means that both short and longer range applications can be planned for. And that's before you even include the onboard power inverter. Before I go further though, let's deal with exactly what we're talking about when I say class three truck. For those who don't know, it's essentially a vehicle with a gross vehicle weight of between 10,000 and 14,000 pounds and includes vehicles like the Chevrolet Silverado, the Ram 3500 and Ford F450. And while that doesn't mean you're going to be seeing the Bollinger E chassis being used for heavy duty commercial vehicles like trash trucks, it does mean that we're going to see them modified for all kinds of commercial vehicles like utility company work trucks, building service trucks, short distance vehicles, delivery vehicles, flatbed trucks and maybe even small tippers. Traditionally, these vehicles have been powered by large gasoline or even worse, diesel powered engines. And because they're often sat running to power things like power tools on site, they're responsible for some pretty large amounts of pollution. And what you may not know here is that while the base trucks, think the cabs and the chassis, used for such vehicles are often made by big name automakers, the actual conversions, or rather the accessories and bodies that are put onto these vehicles, are made by much smaller bespoke firms. By offering the e-chassis to those conversion companies, with or without a cab on chassis, Bollinger is allowing those very specialist firms a way of transitioning away from internal combustion engines without having to wait around for big auto 
to make the switch. And for markets where zero emission vehicles are becoming increasingly in demand, especially for city corporate and utility fleets, I think Bollinger could get some serious traction in the marketplace because nobody else is doing the same thing. Finally, there's the cost analysis of producing more chassis than B1 and B2. The more batteries, chassis and drivetrains that Bollinger makes, the cheaper it becomes thanks to economies of scale. And in this particular case, economies of scale are essential, especially if Bollinger wants to turn what is a $125,000 bare bones truck into one that more farmers, self-employed tradespeople and off-roaders can afford. That's it. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.